Good morning time, good evening time, whatever the case may be in your part of the world. Crisscrossing Wires, back with another video. And this is another live stream that I'm re-uploading as a regular video. This was me building a 12-volt lithium-ion pack from scratch using the standard welding nickel strip technique. Uh... I'm going to thank you guys ahead of time for watching. Enjoy. Anyone can uh, build a battery like this uh, with a basic welder and a few simple tools. Okay, guys. Take it easy. Peace out. We do E World crisscross and wires, and then yeah, I'm about to cross up some wires for sure. Uh, I know I said I was going to start on my battery build, but I can't do that as of yet because uh, the type of uh, construction technique I'm going to use for my race pack is uh, the copper sandwich <laughs> is that what they call it uh, nickel copper sandwich yeah so that's when you uh, basically sandwich a piece of copper in between nickel strips pretty much the way it sounds but in order to do that you have to have a welder that's capable of uh, welding through some thick copper and some nickel strip. Now, uh, I got some experimenting to do as far as uh, exactly what thickness of copper I'm going to use and nickel strip because there are various uh, thicknesses as far as the nickel and the copper goes and uh, I got to do a little bit of experimentation with that to uh, you know come up with my own uh, formula as to uh, you know what works and not only just what works best what I'm able to actually weld with the equipment I have. Because like I told you, when you start welding, now like say for instance, I don't know if this camera's pointing right, but um, actually it's not. Now that I can see. Looking at the camera, let me see. Let me let it catch up. But yeah. Like this thick, thick piece of copper here, this is pretty thick. So it's going to take a nice, strong welder to actually weld through this piece of copper. So, where's though? This other copper, 
I have is pretty thin, so it probably wouldn't be as hard. But anyway, that being said, like I said, I gotta make me a 12 volt battery, high current, for my little DIY welder. And um, this is gonna be my little homemade DIY welder, as you can see right here. Uh, temporarily, I have it hooked to my power supply right there. That power supply is only 8 amps. Um, and let me see. I can dial the voltage up. Where's the, uh, my little, turn this light off so you can see. My little homemade welder will power on with the uh, power supply. And the working voltage for this welder is between 6 and 40 volts. However, the sweet spot for a welder is in between 5 and 12 volts. Uh, it depending on how much current you have available. If you don't have a, a lot of current available, then of course you have to uh, use higher voltage. So you have a little bit more power but that's the reason why I need to make this 12 volt battery now the 12 volt battery that I'm making is going to be a 3s because you need three of these cells in series to get your 12 volts and in order for it to have enough current output I'm going to do a 6p 3s 6p that should give me about 12 volts at a roughly uh, 250, 300 amps, depending on how many amps these cells really can put out. Now, they're 45 amp cells, so uh, six of them should be close to 300 amps, give or take, here and there. So, we'll say this little 12 volt battery should be capable of 250 amps to up up to possibly 450 somewhere in there it'll be enough so this is where we're going to start and uh that'll give us a little bit of uh you know uh practice as far as our welding goes making our little welder battery now i've uh done some battery welding in the past just tinkering around and um fixing a few batteries you know uh, i've had a couple batteries that were blown uh had bypass bms's and instead of you know because they didn't have a bms uh the nickel strips had burned uh you know you can melt these nickel strips if you pass too much current through them and uh yeah guy had a battery it was bad but i come to find out when i opened it up like i said the nickel strips was burnt so i had to repair that and weld them back together anyway yada 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 you need me all right oh thank you very much but anyway uh okay back to our battery so like i said three of these in series so we're going to start off um with this double nickel strip let me cut this back off so i don't so i don't make some fireworks on camera but uh i'm gonna go ahead and cut this first let's see um, I thought I had some cutters for this. Let's see. All right. All right. I'm going to start running my mouth and just do what I do. Now, because this is going to be my uh, my welder battery, it doesn't have to be 
fancy dancy like uh my race pack is going to be with a copper nickel sandwich i'm just going to use straight nickel for this little 12 volt battery no copper i don't need all of that it's just going to be a basic battery nothing fancy Now I've already uh, put the little stickers on the top at the positive ends. As you know, you get these uh, stickers to try to give it a little bit more insulation between the positive and negative posts because that's where they normally can easily short out. So I don't know why they haven't come up with a, a better wrapper. To wrap these batteries that you don't even have to do that they should be able to uh, insulate these batteries a little better with just you know just the wrapping but I don't know maybe that's too expensive who knows all right let's go ahead and uh, get a couple little tack welds Get this straight. Now I already measured the uh, voltage on these batteries to make sure they were all pretty close together. And uh, I must say, these batteries, they all were pretty much right on the point. Now I got a foot switch down here for uh, my welder. So... You'll notice that uh, when it welds, it's because I'm stepping on my foot switch. Like I said, I'm going to do a, a tack weld. Uh, basically hold this strip in place first. A couple tack welds. My little Amazon welder isn't too bad, but like I said, it's not going to be a high enough current output uh, when I start trying to do those copper sandwiches. Let's see. Now, let me go over something with you. Because... Like I said, this is a 3S, three cells in series. I'm starting uh, with this double nickel strip right here. That is going to put this whole row right here. It's going to put all of these cells in parallel. And it's going to put all of these cells that are in parallel in series with this row of cells that are going to be in parallel because of this strip. So, that's why we're using the double strip. Let me see. I'm trying to make sure I get the camera right. Because I'm famous for not having the camera pointed at the action. <laughs> and y'all probably didn't see none of that. Looking by the way that, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think y'all saw none of that uh, first welding. Anyway, you can see it now. I know mean, somebody would probably been crying. We can't see. Now I got a screen over there that I'm looking at so I can see what's happening. And, uh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Am I on air here? 
Yeah, it looks like I'm on air. Great thing. Be very embarrassing if I wasn't. Yeah. What's going on, uh, Dre? What's happening, homeboy? Been a long time. How you been? What kind of work you doing now, man? Let me know. Um, Dre, the guy Dre that I see in the comment section, he used to be one of my technicians at the Horseshoe Casino. I was his supervisor. You know, I ain't there no more. I've been gone from that crazy place, man. But uh, anyway... I hope you're doing all right. I can't really see what's happening over there. Let me uh, let me look at this little tablet. Oh, you at Lowe's? Okay, okay. Good to hear from you, man. Have you uh tried to get back down at the casino, or are you you interested in going back, or are you done with that casino life? I know I'm done with it. You know I got a um a sim racing channel. I I remember you was in the gaming. So, uh, even though it's been kind of neglected, but uh, I'm going to get back on it. Oh, you tried... Hey, did you hear what happened to Gary? You know Gary passed away. I'm sure you probably heard that by now. Um, I tell you what, the other guy, I don't know, was you there when, um, I can't even remember the guy's name. Man, two people that passed away while I was down there, man. Gary and uh, I can't remember what the other guy's name was. Man, that's terrible. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if you was there when the other guy was there, man. I can't even remember. I was trying to tell these guys I, I used to be a supervisor down at the casino and uh anyway I don't know about you but we can talk about it now honestly I never really liked uh the way that casino was taking them people's money like that I, I never felt good about that job I mean I liked I like doing it because it was electronics, of course, but um, yeah, I never felt good about the way them people was down there, them regulars down there losing their money all the time. Anyway, good to hear from you, man, and I appreciate you subbing. Although, uh, like I said, I haven't been doing nothing on that channel. I'm about to get back to it, though. All right, fellas. So as you can see, uh, I basically got that roll welded up. So uh, this uh, group of cells is now in series with this group of cells. 
and we'll have to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side but we're going to be putting these two rows in series now so uh, let me go ahead and cut another piece for this side that kind of works out pretty good yeah. Nah, man. Um, you talking about Nicole? Nah, I, I uh, you know, Nicole was a a good girl, man. She was nice, but um, that we broke up. I'm getting ready to get married now. Uh, I'm engaged. I mean, I pretty much, I'm pretty much married. I'm as married as you can be, but uh, we're about to make it official. And a couple more weeks. But uh, I, I see her every now and then, you know, every now and again. I talk to her here and there. You talk to, oh, thank you. You talk to, um, shoot. What's the other guy? Man, it's terrible. I can't remember people's names, man. That's bad. I got my old man stuff going on, man. <laughs> I might be getting early stage dementia. I can't remember nothing. This ain't a bad little welder, though. But like I said, it definitely would not be enough power to do those copper sandwiches. Can't be running my mouth but so much. I gotta pay attention to what's happening here before I uh, make a terrible mistake. We don't want that. I mean, this would have. This was a real easy battery right here. Ain't wasn't a whole lot to it. Okay. So now I'm gonna have to uh, put all of these in parallel. Just run a nickel strip across this end and uh, do the same thing with the positive side. Run a single strip across there. And the. Uh, that will almost be a wrap on that. Now, then I can show y'all possibly how this little DIY uh, welder works. The only thing is uh, I probably need to charge these batteries up, though. 
Now, like I said, this is this is my DIY welder and how this going to work. Uh, I'm going to disconnect it. Well, you know what? No, I'm not going to disconnect it. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to put an XT60 on it. And then I'm going to dial my power supply up to 12 volts. I'm going to plug it up, let these batteries charge up. But I can also leave it plugged up so these batteries are getting charged up and they're constantly connected. And I can leave the leads connected to the power supply. Now, this power supply is only 8 amps, okay? Which is plenty enough to charge this 12-volt pack. But once I connect the pack to it, my uh, DIY welder will then have up to 250, 300 amps at 12 volts. Because uh, as you can see, where it connects on a power supply, it's putting, uh, putting it in parallel with the uh, battery pack. So these are the leads like this, as uh, like I showed you before. Let me see, let me turn this back up. When that welder comes on like that, I don't know if you can see it. You can also change the gears on it. This uh, shunt has eight different current modes. So uh, each each mode will allow it to uh, will step the current up. So you know you can. Uh, fine-tune your level of welding as they say but anyway but believe it or not this little this little DIY welder will probably outperform this welder because uh, this is only a 5 volt 5 volt and it's rated 80 to 800 amps now we all know this thing ain't no 800 amps and I'm pretty sure they mean peak amps but I doubt if it's even 800 peak amps. So uh, this battery pack will definitely supply a whole lot more current. Not only that, uh, the difference in voltage as well will make it you know weld a whole lot better like I said this is 4 to 5 volts and this is going to be 12 volts alright let's go ahead and uh, we're going to tack weld this up there first try and get it nice and straight I gotta see what the time is because y'all know my these GoPros don't give me but so much time. So hopefully uh, I can finish this before it lights out. strip was not long enough but uh, I'm going to put another one on top Now when I finish and we measure this battery, it's probably going to 
only be about, um, what did they, I think they were measuring like 3.5 volts. So uh, it's probably going to be sitting at around 10 volts because it needs to be charged up. Once they're all fully charged up to like 4.2 each, uh, then we'll have our 12 volts. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is exciting. <laughs> you guys take a look at it so of course this is our positive side this is the most positive section and this is our most negative section and uh, let me go ahead and get a measurement a voltage measurement uh, to see where they sitting at right now till I charge them up let's see it's a positive side and it's a negative side okay just what I said is sitting at about 10.5 10.5 and uh, let's see what is a well yeah that makes it like 3.5 a piece all right so like I said, I'm going to put them on charge. We're going to get them up to 12 volts. And uh, then we can go ahead and hook up our weld. And let me see if I can go ahead and get a XT60 connector on here. I thought I had one. Okay, right here. Mm. This is not going to be long enough. So maybe it will if I do it. No, it ain't going to be long enough. I think I got another one somewhere. Uh, let's see. Mm. I have to put y'all on standby for a minute. See what I wanted to show you guys over here, real quick. Uh, well, I wanted to show you guys uh, how I looked up under this seat once I once I got the controller wired up. I think it looks pretty good. It's nice and neat. Well, kind of neat. 
and uh, I'm glad I took the seat off and looked. I was in such a rush when I mounted this seat on. I got to slow down, man. I be tripping. I only put uh, two damn bolts in the damn uh, <laughs> in the bracket. I can put one up the top and one down the bottom, caddy corner, and uh, forgot to put the other two in there. So I was riding around today with two bolts. But I'm going to tell you, with them two bolts, that thing was pretty solid. Pretty. Uh, anyway. That wasn't good for my fat ass, though. Well, I don't know how much time we got here. Let's let's take a look at the time. Anybody pay attention to the time? How long I've been? Okay, 35 minutes. What I'm going to do is put a little, another little end on there so I can sort it to. We will solder our leads to those little tabs I just put on. Let's uh, plug our soldering iron up here. Kitty cat is knocked out. Yeah, you knocked out, son. You had a late night. You was hanging out. You was out at the club. Leave that alone. All right, let's let that heat up. And we are just about done this little initial stage one. Now, like I said, tomorrow, well, probably going to be later on the night for me, I will start on the big battery after this gets charged up. And uh, I figure I can probably do my 
nickel copper sandwich. Something like, uh, it is going to be something like that. Yeah, so, won't be too bad. Now, uh, this 0.2 millimeter thick nickel, oh, wait a minute. I am not going to make it confusing with that uh, dual stranded. All right, here's a single, single strip of nickel. Now, this is 0.2 millimeter thick. So this is the, the thick one and eight millimeters wide. And it's quite a difference between the nickel, the little nickel strip that I used on this 12 volt pack. Um, I think this is 0.1 millimeter thick strip. And I think it's like uh, four millimeters wide, maybe five. And uh, I think the I think this uh, nickel strip can handle what is it like? Uh, shoot, what did they say? I don't know. I gotta check the current rating on it. But it's a it's a significant difference between this strip and this one because this is double the thickness and almost double the width. So as far as current flow. This is what we're going to be using on our, our race pack along. We will probably be using possibly, well, it's definitely going to be two layers of this, two of these, and the uh, copper strip in the middle, which is most of the current flow is going to be going through the copper anyway. The, the nickel is pretty much just so we can weld it. But, um, you know, most of the current flow is going to be traveling through that copper. So, my battery should be good to go. Like I said, I've never done it before. But, I mean, I knew I was going to be, I know I can do it. I know I ain't, ain't a whole lot to it. And, uh, yeah. I don't think that looks too bad for our first our first little 12 volt battery uh, where is my flux Am I going? I picked a bad time to be looking for it now. Uh, man. That's why I hate not being in my shop because shit is everywhere. Oh well, I'm gonna try to do this without flux.
Ooh, this thing getting hot. Wait a minute. I'm going to have to uh, use these helping hands here because my hands is burning up. Let's see, let's do it. Let me cut this off and do it again. Waste a little bit of solder, but I think I got a better technique. See? And it would be a lot easier had I located that flux. But uh, being as though I got you guys strapped to my chest, I ain't about to run around looking for it. And no, you don't need no damn BMS on this battery. Because <laughs> we want maximum current flow for our welder. We damn sure don't want that. Oh, man. Copper sheets over there with this damn stuff, man. Okay. All right. So that is that. Go ahead and bend those around like that. And I think we'll go ahead and tape this up with this cap on tape so we don't accidentally short nothing out.
Lou, what's happening, man? I was wondering where you was at, bruh. You was MIA on my uh, premier battery bill, bruh. Damn it, look at me messing up my tape. Oh, shoot. Hate when that says that. Telling y'all now, when I build this race battery and I get them 450 amps to that controller over there, whoo, it's gonna be hell to pay. Cause right now, uh, my system is starving for juice. And the speeds that I'm going right now is all raw speed, meaning with no feel weakening. So uh, right now, my motor is, uh, well, I mean, that controller is dealing with all that back EMF that I have uh, that's being created by that motor. And... Um, that's a hell of a lot of magnetic field trying to uh, overcome when you when you got all them RPMs under that much current draw the the magnetic field that's being created that back EMS EMF is so strong that's what is keeping me from cruising over that triple digit mark but once i can keep that voltage up above 70 uh 71 volts because the low voltage cutoff on that asi is 71 volts it's set at 71 volts and field weakening cannot take effect if the voltage is being snatched because I got so much sag because uh you know that controller is trying to pull 450 amps and I don't have 450 amps worth of battery it is making my voltage sag below 71 volts so I'm not getting any field weakening taking effect so that is just raw power getting it up to the speeds that it is now but like i said once this battery is done we will get some field weakening and boy it's gonna be like light speed real light speed all right so so that's our 12 volt battery it's done we're gonna charge this thing up and uh next time i catch you guys we're gonna start on our big battery i'm pretty sure uh this this GoPro is about to cut off in a few. Wow, I just noticed my SD card is full. So anyway, while well, I got a few minutes, anybody got anything they want to say? Let me know. Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> man i guess ain't nobody got nothing to say oh well yeah man uh let's go ahead and stick this back on there oh that's right i gotta put them bolts in there i might as well go ahead and pull this
I need to get some quick release. Uh, anybody know any? Uh, I know I, one guy posted some. I never were, was able to locate them though. But they got some, like these little thumb screws. They got some screws that you screw them in. And then uh, it's like a button. You 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 push them in, and the the thumb part releases. So once you screw them in, you you can push them like that, and they pop right off. So I need some quick releases because uh, I don't ever want to be that guy that if my battery starts smoking, it's taking me. 10 years to get this cover off to get that damn thing up out of there and it can happen to anybody as far as uh, cells going in the thermal runaway especially when you dealing with big power big power which I'm going to be dealing with and uh, no BMS ain't no damn BMS going to be in that battery I'm building Now, it will be a BMS, my kind of BMS, not battery management system, battery monitoring system. And batter, battery monitoring is more important to me than management. I can, I can manage them, but I want to monitor them. And as long as you monitoring your batteries as far as temperature, voltage, current flow and all that uh that little thermal runaway issue i was talking about it had never happened to me because i'm too anal about um you know making sure that the battery is running cool that the voltage is right and all that you know i just don't dog dog this thing when i'm out there testing um i'm gonna put some temp sensors in there that's gonna be the biggest thing i put in that battery or uh, some temperature sensors. That's what's most important. Uh, monitoring the temps. But uh, look at that. I sure did only put two screws in there. <sighs> but yeah, fellas. This thing is going to be cutting out in a few. So I appreciate whoever stopped through. Whoever's uh, watching right now. Appreciate y'all supporting. Um, like I said, I got some real slick speed mods that uh, I've been contemplating. And um, I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to do that hold of my good mods. So that's why I said when it comes to speed mods, I'm putting that on my Patreon because, you know... I, I do have some control over that. Who sees what, you know. So, like I said, I'm not trying to keep no DIY repair stuff hidden from you guys. All that will be free access as it always has been. But um, when we're talking about speed and performance, uh, that's not necessary. That is luxury stuff. <laughs> so, that ain't... That ain't nothing you gotta have. That's something you wanna have. And uh, like I say, I'm definitely not gonna be sitting up here teaching my arch enemies uh, how to go fast. Because then they wanna come and talk shit. Call me out after, they, after they've been watching and learning shit from me. They want to come snatch the rock from the palm of my hand. Y'all know how it go. Anyway, this thing did. Yeah. All right, let's check. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if anybody. <laughs> I'm glad y'all can't see me falling. What's going on, Mr. Blaine? How you doing, sir? Yeah, I can't, I can't be, I can't be giving the good stuff away to the people that's trying to 
take me out with it. Absolutely. And then, not only that, I mean, the Patreon, my Patreon, the lowest membership is $3. $3. Come on now, it's $3. Ain't like it's an arm and a leg. You don't have to get a top tier membership to get the uh, the secret information. To, you know, just the $3 membership is going to get you in there. I'm going to post all, all that's going to be posted in there that anybody can see that's a member. So, you know. Anyway. I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, deuces. Y'all have a great day. I'm down to 2% on this battery. I know it's about to cut off any second now. So y'all take it easy. Take much care. Crisscross and wise. It's a Crooked Finger production. Peace. We out. Tomorrow we'll be working. Okay, guys. So that's the end of that. Hello, uh, Automators. As you Thanks can see, for tuning in again. I'm Brian this. from Auto that was an old video uh i didn't even have my new racing pack in the bike at the time but uh i thought it was something that may interest you guys that's uh prior to me building my race pack experiment and that's why i made that little 12 volt pack all right deuces we out peace trying to be out if I can get out of here. <laughs> God damn it. Wait a minute. Oh, shoot. I can't get out. Okay.